Okay, and uh, now I'm I'm back in the car, <laughs> and this time I have a very wonderful woman that I've met here in Kilgoris, and uh, she and I had wonderful conversation with some of the other ladies about uh, some of the trials and uh, tribulations that the women of the area uh, suffer. And so I thought maybe I should grab her before I head back to the U.S. and ask her a couple of questions, and uh, so that we can. Uh, shed some light back home about some of the same women issues that exist in the U.S., what they are here and, and how, the, how they so, sometimes play out in our lives. And so in front of me, I have, if you could tell me your name, where you are, uh, where you work, what you do, how you came to your current employment, that would be great. Okay. Thank you so much. My name is Damaris Njeri Mbuga. I work as a teacher, as a, uh, a teacher not by profession, but by, by call. I first of all worked with the bank, but because of the, the interest of a girl child, I had to quit the job and go and work as a teacher. Partly I do guiding and counseling uh, from the area that I am working in because it's a, an, a major area and a major concern of the girl child being affected with the sexual promiscuity. So I do counseling. I help them realize who they are in God. And many of the girls have come to realize who they are despite the challenges. So now you said that you are a teacher not by profession but by call. So, and, and I recall yesterday you are telling me that you were previously at the bank as well as in business administration, right? Yes. So this call, because it's a call, do you, you don't regret having left a higher paying salary in order to teach? Not at all. Not at all. In fact, I earn a peanut, but uh, God is gracious. I do some, some business. I, I engage in farming and I help raise money and pay for some little girls for basic needs. Given that most of them are challenged, they can't even have their pants. They don't even have their pads when it's their period's time. Hmm. That you know, I'm I'm glad you mentioned that because that was one of the questions that that I wanted to ask you. Um, being being a woman and and remembering uh, being 12 and 13 years old when my menstrual cycle began, I think about when I see the little girls here. You know what what is that 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 process of entry into womanhood like that like for them? How, how where where do you get the funds from uh, to care for 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 the for the girl transitioning into a woman? Where, how 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 do you get help? It's really hard. It calls in for volunteers, some volunteer to come and give them the, the sanitary towels. But in most cases, you'll find that in a, in, a, in, a, in a range of them, you get that most of them use local sanitary towels and they share as a family because they are so poor. They share and you see it's a, it's a major problem as far as health is concerned because they get infection. So... It depends with a, an individual who has a good heart to step in and share the little that you have with them. Wait, 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 wait. Did you say that they are sharing sanitary napkins? Oh, yeah. So if it's, if, 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 if it's a, a two girls, an aunt and a mother in one household, mm -hmm. those four female bodies are sharing? They are sharing. They make up their local med. They use a towel or a piece of blanket. And they share when one is not in, the, in, the, in that menstrual cycle, another one is. So she uses them, they recycle, they wash them, and then they have to share. They wash them in, in, in what water? If there's no running water? In the stream water. In the stream water yeah. that, that's full of uh, bacteria? Bacteria and contamination. So it's never really clean? It's never clean. You get that many of them are infected. They have the infection. So that challenge, you know, they're already dealing with that at the young age of 12 and 13. And then there are some situations where the young girls and young ladies are, are being physically, sexually abused. Mm. And whatever disease may come along with that compounds on top of the infection that they uh, most likely have received as a result of uh, the, the recycled use of sanitary napkins. Am I understanding correctly? Oh, yes. So by the time you're 18 or 20 years old... Uh, a young a, a young woman could be riddled with disease. Very much. 
very much. Some of them, they in fact, they, they, those who get lucky to be married, they even break their marriages because they are already sick. They already sick. So those that have have found good husbands and it's and it's it's a great thing for them uh, to to be married. They sometimes have to break the marriages because of their sickness. Because of the disease. So the husbands, the husband husbands, and wife, they don't they don't stay stick. They don't stick it out. They with don't it. stick with each other. So it's not, uh, and uh, how does how do the vows go? Uh, whether in sickness and in health, that's not the case. It's not the case. It's not the case. So then, who cares for these women when they are now uh, outside of a marriage with disease? Uh, and wait, I'm sorry, with disease. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not mistaken, um, probably a multiplicity of babies at this point from being raped. Yeah. From having to have forced sex. Very, very many, very many bastards. Let me say. I don't mean to be harsh, but no. so many, so many kids brought out out of wedlock. Mm. So many of them. At the age of 13, you get a child has a baby. At the age of 15, not even one, two. And they drop out of school. And they drop out of school. Yes. And so you as a teacher, you have to find a way to minister to them through uh, the, the call of education, being an educator, yeah. not only with their basic reading, um, math, science, English, mm -hmm. but even through the social and life skill issues that they're having. In fact, that is what I venture most into. I have a strong bias in raising them up because I believe that even if I educate them in the basic knowledge and they don't have the, the, the life skill, it will be meaningless because I've seen mm -hmm. by experience most of them excel in their normal learning, but two years later somebody's down the grave because he didn't know how to come out mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, defend herself. She didn't know who she was. She didn't know who she was. Yes. So now, you're, do you find that you have to sometimes come out of your pocket to help provide resources for these children? Not even one time. Most of the time. And it, it's a great burden. It is a great burden. Sometimes nobody understands you why you do that. You receive so much criticism. Some even tell you, don't do that. Let them struggle on their own. But it really touches somebody. It calls for a, a deep heart. Because you see a child suffer. And uh, the, the, the heart that I have for the girl child, I feel worn down and I go an extra mile. You, now, you say God child. In the U.S., a God child is, is a child that you've gone to the church and stood before the altar in front of people and God and expressed a desire to be the, 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 the help to the child's parents mm -hmm. in order to raise them up in a godly way. Mm -hmm. But I notice when you say God child, you're talking about the children. You're, you're uh, seeing these children as your children from God. Yeah, ah. yeah. Okay, uh, the, the 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 money. So if if you feel a great burden to assist with uh, purchasing some of the resources that that the children need and and the girls need, you can you can't hardly afford this. You and I talked yesterday about money, and, and if you don't mind, if if you if you do, if it's a problem to share this um, in in this interview, I understand. But if you are comfortable at all sharing um, with those that are watching this video what the numbers were when you were in banking versus what they are as a school teacher, um, I, I think that would give us great perspective in the U.S. Okay. And any place else that may be watching this video. Thank you. Okay, in a bank. Where I used to work before quitting the job, I used to earn 12,000 shillings. That is Kenyan money, which is a substantial amount to keep me running. And then where I work currently, because I'm not in the payroll of the government, I'm employed by the school committee, I get 4,500, which is just a peanut, but I'm glad. Okay, you, you said 12,000 shillings is what you used to earn at the bank. Yeah. 12,000 shillings, based on today's um, uh, exchange rate, is about 14 American dollars? Mm -hmm. am, I, am I thinking correctly? 20,000? No, 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 no. no. 20,000, 200, what did we raise the other night um, for the women's conference? Two, so 200,000 shillings is... Is that two hundred dollars? Help me. Twenty thousand. Twenty thousand. Okay. Twenty. Okay. So twenty thousand Kenya shillings yes. is about two hundred American dollars. Yeah. 
give or take a couple of hundred yes. dollars. Yes. So you're saying you earned fourteen thousand. Yes. So per month you were you you were making uh, somewhere around a um, hundred and forty dollars a month. Yes. A hundred and forty U.S. dollars to work at the bank. U.S. dollars. And now you are at less than half of that. Of that. So for forty five hundred Kenya shillings, a thousand is about twelve dollars, right? So. Yeah. So you're looking at 12 times 4, that's 40. So you're making about 50 American dollars a month yeah. as an educator. As an educator. As an educator that's not only teaching basic education, but, um, life, but skills. life skills, Literally. social skills, yeah. anger management, yes. right? Uh, sexual appropriateness. Uh, yeah. Oh, my. And that has, let me add, that has forced me, I cannot be able to manage my own house. I've, I've, it has forced me to move into my relative so that I can say the little to have this child. My Lord. Okay. So what can we do to help? Those of us that are in the U.S. and, uh, oh, my finger is in front of the camera. Please forgive. Okay. Um, what can we do in the U.S.? What can we do in England? What can we do in Yugoslavia? What can we do all over the globe to assist with this situation? What, what is it that you need from us? Number one, prayers. Prayers. So that we may stand, so that God may even raise more people with the heart of this child because we are living in a society where it's all me, I, and myself. Nobody... Uh, but so many people are just concerned about them. And uh, we need God to raise many people, to raise warriors who can stand despite of the challenges and have this child. And then number two, finances, to be able. You see, as much as one may be willing to, but the financial position is not supportive, it becomes hard. And then the, the materials for inspiration, uh, yeah, and so many other. Okay. Yeah. All right, very good. I really appreciate your taking the time to talk with me. Thank uh, you, the sir. couple of sessions that we had this past week and our one on one conversation yesterday. And then I really appreciate your stepping out of the meeting just now, you know, just to kind of allow me to capture this on video so that I can share this because I can't explain it the way that you can. So I appreciate your transparency. Thank you so much. I'm so humbled and may God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Mm -hmm.